Welcome back to this season's fourth episode of Real College Reviews. I'm your host, Jude Bazerman, and I'll let my guest, Dan McCurby, just take it away from here. Hey guys, I'm Dan McCurby. I'm a junior at Northeastern University, and I'm a mechanical engineering major with a concentration in aerospace engineering. Well, Dan, Northeastern University is one of the premier universities, not only in Boston, but the entire country. But one thing that really makes it stand out, not only is the the trimester internship program, which we'll get to later on, and I'm sure it has a more specific name that I didn't exactly hit on the head, but it's the fact that a lot of the students who are first years, first semesters, have to go abroad before they ever step foot onto the campus in Boston. And I want to ask you, because I know you did that, where did you go? And just give me the rundown of that experience. Yeah, so, yeah, you hit the nail on the head there. I'd say it's about 50-50 for incoming freshmen these days for going abroad, like, right before they go to Boston. So it's called the NUN program. That's what it was called when I went, but now they're changing the title to Global Scholars. Fancy. And Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> it's basically you have a couple options for it, but the, the more popular and most common one is you just spend your first semester freshman year abroad in one of the universities in various countries that they have relationships with. So f- yeah, what are yeah, just what are some of those that yeah, a student would have to so choose from? So really f- common ones are London. They actually have a their own official campus in London r- run by Northeastern entirely. Mm-hmm. Greece is a common one. They have stuff in Berlin, and I was in Dublin, which is a pretty big program they also have with the University College of Dublin. So it's really those four, and then say you wanted to go to South Africa for whatever reason, would you be able to make that work with Northeastern, or is it pretty cut and dry on where you can go and where you wouldn't be able to go? It's pretty cut and dry, at least for the NUN Global Scholars Program. Right. I'll, try, I'll try to call it that going forward. <laughs> uh, but you can always do your own program later on in your college career, like junior year. A lot of people do these things called dialogues where you can take classes or do even co-ops. I, I guess I'll breach into that later. But yeah, yeah. you can take certain classes with uh, more lesser established programs that they have. But you can do that in a fair amount of countries and, and cities that you're interested in. But um, the, the big ones are London. And they also have a pretty big program in Oakland, California, at uh, the former Mills College. So not so. not San Francisco, not L.A., not Oakland, San Diego. Yeah. O- Oakland, where o- all the teams are moving out of. Yeah. All right, o- I just Oakland. want to make sure. Yeah, I yeah, I know. That. It's... Does anyone go there that, that you know of? And do they, I mean, do they enjoy it? I don't know that many people who went there my year. I know it was a lot more popular, uh, maybe not by choice, but just, you know, more common among students in the year under me mm-hmm. because the program is... I don't know, maybe it was about a third of students my year. Now it's it's, it's about a half. Just going so, to Oakland. No, not Oakland. Just, oh, just, just, NU, just a NU whole in... abroad program. Okay, yeah. okay. London and Oakland are the big takers for, for students coming in through that program. But gotcha, yeah. yeah. And and like you said, you went to Dublin in Ireland. And from what I've seen, I haven't been to Europe, I haven't been to Ireland, but it looks like a great time. But I got to ask you, just going there, when did you leave the U.S. in comparison to your other friends going to college? And then was it tougher, did you think, to get adjusted to college life in another country compared to maybe if you were in the United States? Yeah, so Northeastern starts later than most universities already. Okay. And and the Dublin program started later later than even Northeastern and and all the other abroad programs, actually. So I believe normal start date for Northeastern is like first week September. Okay. And most colleges start in August. Right, right. But, and, you know, the programs in Spain, London, they all started... Probably around the same time Northeastern did first, so that first, first week September, like after Labor Day, kind maybe of time. even last week of August. Okay. But Dublin actually started end of September, which really, really was unfortunate. So and you that, had a month that, to yourself, really back home. Yeah, I didn't have any friends at home. You know, the, basically the whole month of September it was, it was kind of unfortunate. Yeah. And that was that's not typical. It I actually I was in a year where they had some issues with COVID and getting tests from the pre from the previous class submitted on time so so you had like incoming Irish college students not being able to take tests on time and therefore not being able to get into the respective colleges so they had to delay it by a month so that they they could administrate tests over the summer so it would have started at a normal time yeah you were just in a different situation without all the COVID stuff exactly like the year after me started on time like er like early September but once you eventually got there was it easy to adjust or was it you know a big culture shock on top of going to college with that course load and just the different environment compared to high school so yeah it It was different. I wouldn't say it was hard to adjust at all, though. Maybe it's just me as a person, Mm -hmm. but the 
workload and like coursework we had to do was uh, really light. And it was kind of like that for everybody, you know, give or take a few types of majors. Yeah. But even engineering, which is notorious for having a big workload, yeah, yeah. never really had any problems. And, and it gave us more of an opportunity to adjust because we didn't have to do that work. Yeah. So, so yeah, it really wasn't that hard. You know, the coursework was similar to every other sort of STEM major. I know the architect majors, they had a lot of work, you know, as they typically do even normally. But yeah. being in Dublin, that really didn't go away for them. And that was kind of it, though. Everyone else had a really easy time. Yeah, and that's what I've heard from, you know, friends who have gone abroad in their sophomore year, their junior year, kind of the more typical times to study abroad in college, that the work is a little bit toned down so you could explore, you know, not only your city or your country, but also everywhere else in Europe because it's so easy to get around once you're over there. And that's kind of my next question to you is while you were over there for those 15, 16, however many weeks in Dublin, did you get to travel kind of all over Ireland and Europe? And then where was your favorite place that you ended up going while you were over there? Yeah, so... Northeastern had some trips that they kind of planned for us in Ireland. You know, it's a small country. You can drive yeah. across the whole country in like four hours. It's like New Jersey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like driving from like, you know New York City to Cape May, right. pretty much the same distance. Really small, which makes it easy to get around and show the students around Absolutely. Ireland. So within Ireland, I explored a lot of the West Coast. Galway was probably my favorite location in Ireland. There was these really cool islands off the coast that we went exploring, just hiking around, and it was it was really fun. As for other places in Ireland, we did the typical tourist destinations, Cliffs of Moher, you know, tour of the city of Dublin. So you were able to travel all around Ireland. Yeah, I saw a good chunk of Ireland, and I also saw some of Northern Ireland on my own. Oh, without Northeastern kind of playing yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So I went up to Belfast. I saw the Giant's Causeway on the north coast. So that that was really nice, too. Yeah, that that all sounds amazing. And then I just got to ask as well, in terms of the whole NUN program, is did I get that name right yeah, finally? Yeah, NUN yeah. program, would you recommend it for someone, you know, I guess if you're on the fence between Northeastern and a few colleges and Northeastern gives you that that option to go abroad in your first semester, would you recommend it? Or would you say maybe go to a different college and take a more typical experience? If you think that you're comfortable stepping out of your comfort zone, which I believed I was and still believe I am, mm-hmm. it's worth it 100%. I mean, all the NUN kids I talk to are just, you know, they have endless things to say about their time, you know, the countries they went to. I mean, I, I traveled around Europe. I, I didn't really touch on that too much, but I mean, I went to several countries, met tons of new people. I mean, my closest friends in college, I all met in Dublin. And from the abroad program. Yeah, I mean, I'm still living with them today. I'm about to move in with them next week. So, And I'll hopefully continue to live with them for the rest of my time in Boston. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd, I'd 100% recommend it. I mean, even people you meet when you come back to Boston, you, you notice this, like, divide between students who were in Boston previously mm-hmm. and incoming students from various NUN locations. And there's definitely, like, a bubble from the Boston group to the NUN group. And the NUN kids, it doesn't even matter what location you're in. You, you typically just end up bonding with them. And all of my closest friends today, I'd probably say a good 90% of them were NUN students just because of like the type of people that they are and, you know, what they like to talk about and how friendly they are. You know, being in a program like that really forces you to be extroverted and, and get out of your comfort zone and talk to as many people as you possibly can. And so that's that's the best way to enjoy it. Yeah. And I think, again, that's also what I've heard from going abroad. Students who went abroad at, at different times than you, just that going out of your comfort zone and traveling and meeting new people is the best way to experience studying abroad no matter where it is. And it's also very interesting that you point the fact out that it's kind of a divide between the students who were in Boston for their first semester and the students who were anywhere in Europe or throughout the world in their first semester. That's something I have no clue about. And I, you know, there's no, no way I would know unless I was in your shoes experiencing college life at Northeastern and just kind of going back to the U S back to Boston, why did you choose Northeastern over other colleges? And what were some other colleges you were considering kind of in your list of final three or four schools? Yeah. So for me, I I actually came into college as a behavioral neuroscience major. So So, a little bit different than a mechanical engineering. Yeah. And in high school, my interest was engineering. And when I was applying to schools, I had this like sudden desire to, you know, give med school a try, get on the pre-med track. And, you know, when I went to Ireland and took classes in that area, I realized that I was making a mistake and I went back to my roots. Engineering for me is the way to go. So the colleges I applied to were kind of on the neuroscience, neuroscience area. Mm-hmm. So I was looking at, yeah, Northeastern, they're, they're pretty general. They're, they're good in 
they're good in about everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, a big one for me was Northwestern. <laughs> Funny enough, I, I really <laughs> like that school. Nice. Yeah, UVA, Michigan, you know, the big state schools. Yeah. And uh, I really like uh, Pitt and uh, UW in, out in Washington. Washington yeah. I actually got into both Pitt and UW, and I probably would have gone to UW if I didn't get into Northeastern. I really like their program out there. So it was really just in terms of you – seemingly wanted a bigger student body but at the same time yeah. you you like that big school feel as well where a lot of the schools you applied to you know are big sports schools washington sure. just went to the national championship in football uva michigan consistently good in, in everything and northeastern it's not really a big sports school but they have a big student body what is that vibe kind of like and what makes it different than other big schools that are out there yeah so yeah northeastern is about sixteen thousand students so not massive but at pretty large That's compared large. to most universities yeah. you know it, it's not a penn state but it's no. it's it's pretty big very few and places are penn state it's yeah. it's really abnormal because we don't really have that big of a like school spirit centered sports yeah. program we don't have a football team at all like period, yeah. yeah yeah i mean we have we have a lot of sports we offer lots of sports but you know you don't really see students coming out to them with one exception hockey hockey's the big one for us i mean you see everyone comes out to the hockey games Typically, the arena is almost full, and it's it's really nice. My freshman year, I went to a lot of hockey games. We have this tournament in Boston called the Bean Pot, where you have Harvard, BU, Northeastern, and Boston College, and it's just a like knockout style tournament with them. It's every year. And my freshman year, I went to the semifinals and the finals, and we won. The whole and tournament. That was that was something else, man. It was it was crazy. Atmosphere was awesome. You had like the executives for Northeastern coming out. The president was wow. there, like in the stands with the with the students celebrating with us. Yeah, it went to OT, Game and it two. was it was like penalty shootouts in the end. So it was like, and we beat Harvard. It was quite the atmosphere. And I didn't go this year, but we we won again this year. And we, we have a really good hockey program. Right? It, so, it sounds like yeah. It, I mean, yeah. it's, it's a D one school. Not a lot of people know that, but you know, we have good hockey program, good a really good women's sports actually. Good soccer, women's rugby and men's rugby were pretty good at too. Baseball, I heard, were pretty decent at. So it's just not the typical right football, basketball, yeah, huge sports that schools yeah. are typically I mean, known for. I've been yeah. to a basketball game, but you don't see the same turnout as you do for hockey at the basketball games. We're just we don't really have that good of a team this year. Yeah, so. and it happens. And who who knows? Maybe Northeastern gets you know I guess not Bronny James Jr. because he's in the NBA now, but they get some huge prospect and then suddenly everyone goes to the basketball games because sometimes yeah, easily, that's what happens. Easily could yeah. happen. Yeah. But, you know, you mentioned the coursework when you were abroad in Ireland and how it was pretty light. But in Boston so far, in your year and a half there so far, has it been more of the same? And I know you're engineering, so that's answer is probably a no. And then, you know, how have you kind of dealt with that that tough coursework? If, if you know, maybe it not, might not be tough for you, but it's definitely more time-consuming than high school. Yeah, so, you know, in Ireland, as I said before, not much work at all. You know, you're traveling on the weekends, going random places, and, you know, you don't really have to worry about that much. Coming back to Boston, completely different story. <laughs> I know it's true for everybody, you know, all majors, business, engineering, arts, everyone even has, like, a, a higher workload. So, but for engineering, it's, it's even more drastic. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it, it was a big adjustment. And uh, freshman year engineering is notoriously really hard. They try to weed out the people who aren't cut out for it. Or, you know, they try to make you, you know, f figure out if you really want to do engineering. Yeah. And that was the test for me. Thankfully, I stuck with it. You and, passed. Uh, you yeah, passed the I, test. I, yeah, I, I passed with flying colors. I, I really enjoyed first-year engineering. But typically, the first-year engineering program at Northeastern is centered around this one course called Cornerstone of Engineering. And that's a notoriously hard class. Lots of work. Really project. So big weed out yeah. type of class. Yeah. It's it's pretty much the weed out class. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of schools have that first year engineering type of program. Yeah. So you basically get to learn like some coding, circuits, like physical, like hands, hands on, hands -on circuit building, wow. shop work, lots of homework, lots of projects. And when you're NUN, you're coming in second semester, you don't have the opportunity to do that when you're abroad. Yeah. So you have what's called stacked cornerstone. So you have to take two semesters worth of cornerstone in one. Oh, geez. So we're talking four hours of lecture uh, a day. Just and for that one Yeah, class. and yeah, it's two days a week. Wow. At least mine was two days a week. You could take it three days a week with a little bit shorter, but it's right. it's a drag. It's a lot of work, but it's it's a really fun class, really entertaining. But it's definitely meant to weed out the weaklings there, who, yeah. people who just you know don't love it as much as others. And I've heard that for 
every school that is big at engineering and even the smaller engineering schools, they yeah. have that. And a lot of the, the medical majors as well. And, and oh, for, know, sure. for sure. Even some other stuff that might not be as, as notoriously hard and difficult as engineering. But the professors, yeah, during your time in Boston, have you liked them? Have they been accessible? What's your take on them? Yeah, so I've lucked out throughout my time at Northeastern to have, on average, really good professors. That's good, yeah. I, yeah, I mean... The main courses I take are just straight up mechanical engineering courses or just math. Yeah. That's that's kind of all I really take these days. And the math department at Northeastern is notoriously full of questionable professors. <laughs> it, you know, I, I'd say it's 50 50. You either get a really good professor or you get a really bad so professor. So it's a crapshoot. Yeah, as, you know, I, I basically won the crapshoot there. Uh, I got great professors. My most recent and final math professor was a little subpar but he's kind of an outlier he's kind of in the middle of that yeah. you know great to terrible yeah, yeah. so I, I managed to to get a good grade in that class fortunately but I know my roommates they're all engineers so I hear a lot about different professors in the department and I know there are some there are some bad ones for sure especially in math as I mentioned before yeah. people almost fail just because of just because of the they're professors just so bad yeah. yeah they're just that bad I mean they're hard to understand they don't teach well you know, they, sometimes they just like read off slideshows and it's and just not, an it's just, it's just not a way to learn class, math. Yeah. I mean, you, you're meant to do it out by hand with the professor. And, and don't, don't get me wrong. We have plenty of professors that do that. I mean, my f- favorite professors ever, most of them have been math professors. You know, Calc 3, that was one of my favorite professors ever was when I took Calc 3 over the summer and he was outstanding. I understood every concept going into every exam, straightforward professor, just beautiful way of teaching yeah and that's the case for most professors at northeastern i'd say is there's just some bad ones that uh people talk about more than the good ones for sure and especially at big schools that's what i hear all the time especially with the the math centric majors that sometimes the professors are just lazy and sometimes they're hard to understand which isn't their fault but at the same time as a student you know especially if it's a morning lecture maybe it's oh, late yeah. at night it's you know you're yeah. kind of cooked where if you can't understand what the professor is talking about yeah, what are you possibly going to learn from that class? That if you can't learn Calc 3, it's kind of hard to, to learn on your own. Exactly. But Dan, just going back, you know, we're talking about professors and, and life in the classroom. Students-wise, do you find that most of your peers at Northeastern are nice, friendly, you can kind of work with them, or are they kind of the opposite where they kind of keep to themselves, they're really defensive over their grades and their work, and they don't really want to share anything with you? From an academic standpoint, do you find it easy to work with the kids that you go to class with? Academically, yeah. Most of the kids are pretty good to work with. You know, engineering is pretty competitive, and you definitely see a lot of that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the, the friends I've made in engineering have been really good. And, you know, they're pretty open about grades they get on tests, really easy to work with on projects. And, you know, I've made some good friends just from being in class. And, you know, some some people I'm really close with now, yeah. from being back in Boston, you know, they're NUN kids, but I, I met them... <laughs> I met them in engineering class. Yeah, yeah. So the you know fantastic people for the most part. You know you have a few kids here and there who of are just course, you know yeah. not the nicest, really competitive kind of gatekeepers of a lot of like things. stereotypical engineering. Exactly, just you know really introverted. Nothing against them at all. I'm I feel like that sometimes as well. But uh, for the most part at Northeastern and in my classes, I I have great experiences with the fellow students. Yeah, so. and then and then from a, a so more of a social aspect. What are the typical characteristics of a student at Northeastern? And I know that's a very broad question for a student for a campus with sixteen thousand people. And then, do you kind of see yourself as someone who fits in nicely at Northeastern? Do you kind of stick out like a sore thumb? Yeah, so I'd say the typical student at Northeastern is a bit different compared to most universities. Northeastern itself is really unique in a lot of regards. You know, focuses a lot on abroad experiences, focuses a lot on experiential learning internships, co-op education, stuff like that. So you have students coming in who are attracted to that kind of school and they reflect that in who they are. Mm-hmm. So you definitely see a lot of really unique individuals, but in in a great way. You know, you have all my friends bring really unique things to the table. Right. And I love them for that. And I, I love most students at Northeastern because of who they are and and how diverse and unique they are as people. So so You've been happy with the people at Northeastern. Obviously, for the most part, there's obviously people that out of 16,000, they're not everyone's yeah. going to be, you know, Mr. Rogers with their great attitude. E- exactly. And there's there's a few, you know, sore thumbs who stick out, like he said before. And there's just a few people who just, you know, drag you down and just aren't the best to be around. But 
you know, that's pretty rare. And maybe it's just the people I'm around that I don't see that very often. Yeah. But in general, I, I really haven't seen that very much. And and that happens everywhere, no matter the campus, no matter yeah, what uh, stage yeah. of I life mean, you're in. I'm sure every student at every school, you know, for the most part, depending on certain circumstances, will say that everyone's, you know, most, for the most part, are great. So, 100%. I definitely agree with you. And then moving towards the campus, this, this is interesting to me because whenever I try to look up pictures of Northeastern, I don't really see a campus. I mean, just you, you got to answer this question for me personally, and this might come across as a stupid question, but do you guys have a campus? Oh, or is it more of a city yeah. type of school? I'd say the reason you don't see pictures like that is because they really like to advertise like their programs that they offer. So when, when you look up Northeastern, maybe you'll see one building, but you're going to see a lot of pictures of people doing stuff. And, and that's just because of the type of university that they are. But no, we definitely have a campus. You know, uh, is it pretty? Is it like oh, a nice uh, looking campus? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not University of Washington. It's not UVA. You know, you don't have this sprawling compound of beautiful buildings. But it's it's definitely not bad looking at all, especially in the springtime when you have the, the cherry blossom trees blooming and the sun's out and the weather's nice, no more rain. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful campus. You know, we have nice brick buildings, uh, a lot of modern architecture. So lots of cement and brick and you don't see a lot of old, beautiful buildings that you see at Ivy's and uh, pretty state schools. Yeah. But it's not a bad looking campus for sure. We have great art around statues, sculptures, murals. The actual campus itself is very walkable. Places to sit and do work outside, play, you know, spike ball on different lawns. Go out in the go out in the, the grass like you see in the, the typical college pictures and throw yeah, the I mean, and do whatever the, else. The typical college experience that you see in videos, promo videos, you see that at Northeastern. Yeah. And you know, it it's not I wouldn't call it an outstanding campus because it's you know, it's it's pretty small for such a large school, but it's a good campus. I, I really like it. It does so. the job. Like you're not oh, walking around sure. saying you hate yeah, it here. It's, it's ugly. You definitely get a sense that you're in a city, but you feel closed off from the rest of the city. And it's kind of nice, you know, yeah. no shade to Boston University whatsoever. But, you know, their campus is definitely more integrated into urban Boston, it's like whereas Northeastern is like its own neighborhood. Oh, it's wow. sectioned off. You know, you have streets like when I think of streets, you know, maybe it's because I go to Northeastern, but I think yeah. of Northeastern when I think of those streets Makes and sense, I think yeah. of BU when I think of other streets, but you know, they're definitely more urban of a campus. And I'll compare it to one other school, Boston College. They definitely have more of a campus than we do. Yeah, well, they're you know, even outside of yeah, Boston, they're, right? I, a lot of students at BU and Northeastern say they're not from Boston, <laughs> especially when we're chanting that at hockey games. Yeah. But, you know, they definitely have more of a campus, you know, they're pretty much like their own separate thing. And they, they have a they have a very beautiful campus there. But Northeastern's is is quite good as well. Yeah. And I've you know, I've seen pictures of B.C. It, it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, but yeah. even Northeastern, I guess I got to look further into it after this episode and just finally find out yeah. what this damn campus actually looks like. And not just students walking around in classes or promoting the programs because yeah. I'm just super interested in exactly. that Exactly. And, and a lot of it's hidden by plants like trees and stuff. So it's kind of hard to take photos of it. A lot of photos you'll see online of, of the campus are like of walking corridors and and stuff like that. So it's super it's super secretive, which I guess makes it <laughs> yeah. you know more fun after listening to this episode. Got to look it up, got to research it. And then something else that, that always kind of ties into the campus is the dorm rooms. And not in your time in Europe, because obviously that's going to be a lot different oh, than sure, yeah. in Boston. But what is the physical dorm room? And what is it like for most first and second year Northeastern students? So I had the pretty typical freshman housing experience at Northeastern. I, I believe they guarantee housing for all four years of oh, college, pretty which is rare pretty, pretty for, rare. Yeah. Um, and maybe to their own demise, to be <laughs> honest, Northeastern's housing situation isn't the greatest. That's you, my yeah, that's my biggest that's my biggest that, issue yeah. with them. So, you know, they yeah, it, it's just not the best. I mean, they it's hard to expand in a city, right? right. Especially and as this, compact this as This is true Boston. for basically every city school. Right. And you know, Boston being so compact as you just said, it's hard to find new places to house students and so I'll, I'll kind of go through my track of housing here. Yeah. When I came back from Ireland and settled into Boston, I was in this you know, probably their largest housing building called International Village. Is it is it nice inside there? Yeah, like, I you... mean, it's it's a great place to stay. And it's really designed for single and double rooms, mainly single rooms. Probably like 70% of the rooms are single rooms. 
And wow, that's see, that's yeah. also rare, I think, too, for a dual yeah, wall. yeah, and that is kind of the issue because there's too many students and not enough rooms. So what they do is they force two students into a single into room. A single room. Yeah, and you know it's it's pretty close quarters. I'll say. Luckily, my my roommate was my best friend in college, and I, we had no roommate issues. Him being me being so close with him. And I didn't have that many issues, but it was it was pretty cramped. It wasn't the best. And I'll a be lot honest. of students fall into that same yeah, track for sure. freshman year. Yeah, you know, that's the biggest housing building on Northeastern is that typical room there is I guess forced double. So you have like a single room, a single room, and so four people and two singles. Oh, I see. I see yeah, what you're and then about they now. share a bathroom, which is nice because there's no like floor bathrooms. No communal. Yeah, st- no, yeah. that is really nice. They do have that in other freshman year housing, but International Village is. You get your own bathroom. You only share it with one other room. That's nice. And you, you know, got to clean it though. You do have to clean yeah. it, but you know it's you know four people. You just take turns. Yeah, and, right. Uh, and we also knew the people in the other room we were connected with. We we planned it that way. Yeah. It's good. What's good about Northeastern is if you apply for housing early enough, you'll get a pretty good housing number. For the uh, it's kind of like a lottery system. Yeah. It's how how however early you apply, is however early you get to choose. So it's not Um, based on grades or is it based on year? uh, Yeah. So sophomores will typically get a priority. Uh, I'll I'll go into that in a bit later, but, but yeah, we lucked out to get uh, four, four dudes that we all knew each other and it was a good situation, but I I know people who got randoms and had really bad time in, in, in international village. And that's probably the nicest in terms of like quality of the rooms. I know there's other freshman dorms that are quite popular just because you get more space. They're designed to be doubles, but the building quality itself is not as, not as, as nice because it, it's a pretty new building. Yeah. You also have a dining hall in it and, and the others don't one other does, but so it's that factor of convenience too. Yeah, exactly. It It's yeah. You, you got to choose like which type you, you like. You got to pick your poison. Ex- for exactly. Sure. And I, I didn't really have a choice. Uh, a lot of NUN students don't because, you know, you have the students who are already in Boston. They get the choice of where they want to live. And then you're kind of just put wherever they can fit you. Yeah. So that's that's pretty common with NUN students is they get put into force doubles, yeah. which. Just because they're not there. Yeah. Boston, I mean, it's just, really it's just a sacrifice you got to make. But uh, if I can continue with sophomore year. That's uh, what I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly. So, so, I, so I'll ask you a specific question. You were on campus your sophomore year. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The whole, I, the whole year. So ex- explain that process to me and then, you know, where you ended up as well. And if you liked it or not. Exactly. So the sophomore situation is infinitely better than the freshman situation. That's at least good to hear. And that's a combination of you getting a higher priority because you're a sophomore and the fact that most juniors and seniors try to live off campus. Right. So, and I'll I'll get into that after this, but basically, as I mentioned before, there's a lottery system. So this is form that comes to your email and it's just like, hey, apply for housing next year and you want to do it as quickly as possible so you get a low lottery number. And luckily, I, w- I got the lowest in my group of roommates, and I just chose the nicest housing on campus. And I, we lucked out, and we got it. So, so it was a good experience with that, your, oh, your sophomore Oh, yeah, year for too. sure. So this is pretty common for most sophomores, is you just get an apartment. You share with four people. But it's, it's probably, owned by Northeastern. Yeah, yeah. It's on-campus apartment-style living gotcha. is what they call it. So West Village is probably the largest apartment complex. And I guess I'll take back the largest housing unit from International Village. <laughs> West Village... Is a bunch of buildings, but it's by far the largest housing unit with the same title. Right, it's, right. it's like eight buildings, but it's all under the same name, like West Village A, B, C, and and so on. So, but Ivy is probably the biggest building standalone. But but anyway, West Village typical rooms there look like this. You got four to six people. Sometimes I don't really think they have double rooms there. Yeah. So yeah, four to six people two room or two to three rooms depending on four to six right. and two guys per room and then you got a shared common room you know you could put a tv, a TV in there yeah. they give you couches and chairs or just just one couch but yes yeah, it's, it's good stuff and then uh, a lot of rooms have kitchens which is really nice you could and, cook and, and yeah yeah and I, I really like to cook and so do my friends and so we really took advantage of that in west village and i think that that ties into what i was going to ask you next too and i didn't mean to, i didn't mean to cut you off no, but I, I think that's, this is... that's about all there is to say really <laughs> so a lot of the other housing Units like Davenport are exactly like that. Just apartment style yeah, living. apartment style living, year. exactly. And, you know, you mentioned cooking. And is it in terms of dining halls, too? I'm just going to spit it out yeah, there yeah, because it's a, very, it's a very, you know, 
touchy. I don't want to say touchy is not the right word, but there's a lot of different opinions on dining halls throughout colleges in this country. You know, did you like your dining hall? And then was it mandatory your freshman year, at least when you were in Boston, to have a, a meal plan of some sort? Yeah, so I believe it was mandatory for freshmen. Uh, I, I think it depends on the building you live in. I know for International Village, it was mandatory to have a certain amount per week. I forgot the number. Like a meal swipe. Or yeah, something. yeah. But I, not unlimited. You didn't have to get uh, unlimited. You didn't have to get unlimited. Okay. No, that was That's always an option. But I think we have... 7, 10, and 17, and then unlimited right, meals okay. per week. So I think I was on the 17 just because I went so much because it's just in my building. Yeah, and, and it's uh, also, right, 17 is breakfast and lunch every day, and then, or, or rather, yeah. dinner dinner and lunch every day, and then breakfast yeah, three days yeah, a week. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And th- that was perfect. That was perfect. I, I Probably every week I used up almost all the meal swipes. Yeah. And what's good about their system there is they have like these dining halls per se yeah. that you, if you have excess meal swipes at the end of the week you can go there and like buy a certain amount of food with your meal swipes to take home like snacks oh, pre-prepared meals and sandwiches you can go heat up in microwaves yeah. so they really want you to get the most out of all of your swipes so that's awesome yeah because most system. schools don't yeah exactly so as far as the dining hall situation there's two main ones and there's, there's two smaller ones so international village is probably the most popular one it's definitely the largest and and then there's stetson east which is a big housing complex that also has a dining hall okay uh, and so i'd say they're both pretty equal in size actually yeah. and they're both very popular especially with freshmen and sophomores and and especially especially with freshmen it's about all you have to to eat while yeah. while you're there i mean you can always go out to town i mean there's, there's infinite restaurants there in stuff boston to, and and they're I think that kind of question I was about yeah. to ask answered itself. You're in Boston. It's not like you're in Blacksburg, Virginia. Yeah, or, exactly. I mean, know, there's Syracuse, New York, where there's some limited. You're options. not going to run out of things to do. Tons of food options, tons of activity options. But I'll cycle back to dining halls real quick. Was the food in the dining hall? Yeah. Good? I, Did you I, like I it? I was just about to get to that. The food's good. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's not UMass Amherst. It's not UCLA. You know, you're not going to have top of the line dining, but it's it's good food. And sometimes it's really good too. Like sometimes they make these meals which are just outstanding, and and sometimes they're just okay. But they're never bad. They're never terrible. But the main issue I have with the dining hall is that when you see a meal out, you yeah. can expect it to see. You can expect to see it for a couple of days. Ah, so uh, it's, you just know, it, it's not like they let it sit. There. No, it's not like they let it sit there. And, it's well, just, I meant stale in just, terms of like you just eat it for, for. Oh yeah, I mean they just they buy the ingredients for it and then they make so much of it. <laughs> And then yeah. they just they keep it out for probably you know two to three days, and then they cycle to another thing, yeah. which is unfortunate because if it's just okay, then you're kind of stuck, stuck with, with that it. as your options. And you know, there's always like pizza and and grill. Uh, you, know, you can but get a burger. That gets old but, after you know, that, a while. Yeah, too. exactly. That gets old, and you know, sometimes it's not the healthiest. You know, you got right. salad bars, but that also, that also gets old. Yeah. Uh, you can't have that as just a meal. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's my main issue with the dining hall. But in, generally, the food is pretty solid. I'll, I have to give them, yeah. them kudos for that. Yeah, and that is a lot better than what I hear for the most part on this show. The fact that, you know, the food being out for, and again, not out like, you know, it's one slice of cake out for two or three days. No, but, yeah, you it's know, just, just the same type same of meals. Same type of meals exactly. that they're making. That being the biggest, I don't want to say complaint, but gripe, I guess, Yeah. for the dining hall is really, again, not that big no, of an it, issue. Exactly, exactly. Because the, food, the food's actually good, and it seems to be, yeah. you know, never bad. Exactly. And in terms of doing stuff outside of class that you do for fun, right? Because obviously engineering is a lot of a lot of your time is spent doing coursework and homework and for whatnot. Sure. But are there any clubs or, or societies or anything else that you're a part of at Northeastern that you do for fun outside of class? Yeah. So, you know, there's always Boston itself provides tons of stuff to yeah. do. There's infinite things to do in Boston and, and just in general around and you, the area. And you like the city of Boston, oh, I yeah, would say. It's, yeah, it's a great time, especially over the summer when the weather's nice. Yeah. It's it's unmatched in terms of vibes and just fun. But in terms of clubs, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm mainly active in the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, ASME. I'm on e-board for them. Oh, I, awesome. I run uh, like events within the within the club for yeah. like, team bonding. So just, you know, exercises pretty much. And so, you know, I can talk a little bit about them. They, they kind of just set up programs for mechanical engineering students to do all sorts of things. So, you know, we run workshops, we run activities, networking uh, at all. Is yeah. That oh part yeah, of for sure. I mean, we get ex members who work for high end companies, you know, Apple, SpaceX, wow. BF people coming in from all over, to give presentations about you know what's their 
life now that they work at these large companies and we also get to talk with them because you know they're, they're relatively young and they, they want to talk to us and give us if they're coming tips. back yeah exactly i mean a lot of these guys are like ex asme presidents and, and stuff like that yeah. you know uh, it, it's a good club and there's tons of other engineering clubs you know there's a uh, baja car racing there's electric racing there's uh aerospace club i try to get involved in that uh unfortunately i didn't really have the time at yeah. that point but uh, i'm trying to get involved in them again Tons of other different sort of engineering clubs. Uh, and then there's there's infinite other clubs outside of the engineering sphere as well. One of my f- yeah. favorites that Northeastern offers is called Dream, which I'm really trying to get involved with yeah, what's next that? year. Basically, they take local sort of underprivileged children from you know, Roxbury, sort of poor areas of Boston. And we just kind of just give them like big brother, big sister, and we take them out for the day. Oh, take, that's you awesome. Know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We take them bowling, take them out to eat dinner and just they hang out with a couple of their their friends in the program and they get to just yeah yeah have a mentor yeah. i'm not part of that but my roommate is and, and just my, really my cool. other friend she's also part of that and they, they have lots of good things to say about that program i think that's a really cool club that we have yeah it's almost like like you said a big brother big it, sister it's, it's the same type thing, of program yeah, yeah. yeah and, and i think that's really cool and it's almost like you're giving back to the community yeah. as well oh yeah and then in terms of right this is kind of a northeastern specific question the schedule at Northeastern compared to other schools in the U.S. is very, very different. Just run me through, you know, it's a trimester system, right? Kind of, yeah. Just run, you know, run it's, me through yeah, what's so different about it's Northeastern. It's really bizarre. So, you know, we have the typical fall spring semester, you know, starts in September, ends in December, and then spring starts in January, ends in late April, probably last week of April, like 28th is yeah, pretty typical. Yeah. So that's pretty typical for most universities. But then we have summer. And that's kind of like a third semester, but it's really split into two. Okay. Uh, we call it summer one and summer two, you know, aptly named. And <laughs> so the the main philosophy behind that is because of students who are on co-op, which is, you know, the kind of the thing our school's known for. And so that's kind of why it's split in half because you have the co-op cycle. And so, what is, if you just yeah, explain Yeah, I should what, probably explain what that yeah, is what first. Co-op, so yeah. co-op is basically another word for internship. Okay. Uh, it's, it's more long-term. So yeah, Northeastern's really known for it. It's it's why I was interested in Northeastern mainly, their co-op program. And and their the idea of it is to get students hands-on, like real world experience in the industries that they're interested in before they even graduate. Oh wow. That's- and you know, it's not it's not just like a summer internship you get. It's not, you know, two four months it's six months i mean you're, so it's like a re- almost a real yeah job, I, mean, I, I start next week and uh, i'm starting my first co-op next week and i'm going to the end of the year i mean wow. july to december then six six straight months and i'm working at an engineering company i'm helping design products for them and it's it's real experience you're not just like filing papers in the back you are part of a company part of a team almost like you work there so it, it's great and like every student does co-op is it uh, mandatory or is it just no, highly, it's, highly suggested? It's not mandatory, but like, you know, 95% of students do yeah. co-op. It's just such a good program that we have that it would be stupid to miss out on right. it unless you have certain circumstances that don't allow for it. So typical, you know, path at Northeastern is you either do four or five years, five years being much more common yeah. because, you know, you're you're doing co-op for six months, you know, you're not, you can't take class during it. So you, are you, you can, are, are you going to be taking classes? No, during your no, co-op? that's pretty atypical. You you can, they limit the classes you can take. They limit it to relatively easy classes mm-hmm. uh, just because co-op takes so much time in your day. I mean, you're working a nine to five job and do you get paid for it. Oh, for sure. Okay. I mean, all right. Yeah. That, I mean, is that the it's not, not every co-op is paid, but I'd say a majority are, okay. it's really down to the industry you work in. But engineering is always going to be pretty well paid. Right. And yeah, I'm I'm happy with the salary I'm earning at my co-op. You know, it's nothing crazy, but it's but it's, it's good for first first time co-op, no experience in industry. I'm very happy. Of so, so yeah. And then you're talking about summer one and summer two. Yeah. You know what? W- w- is that just basically you go back to Boston early f- to start your co-op? Yeah. Or it, do you sometimes take classes in the summer as well? Yeah. So. I have done both. I mean, I'm about to go back to Boston in July to start my co-op. Right. And, and that's kind of why they exist, because there's six months. So you start, you either start in the middle of the summer, you end in the middle of the summer. Uh, I'm on fall cycle. I know plenty of people on spring cycle. There's pros and cons to both. But, but the benefit of having that other summer half is when you're not on co-op, you can take classes. 
because if you want to graduate in four years, which is pretty hard to do when you're doing a typical like co-op four experience. years, two co-ops or five years, three co-ops, yeah. it's pretty hard to graduate in four years if you're doing two co-ops, especially with a degree as challenging as engineering right. or, or like finance or, or stuff like that. More rigorous. Yeah, a- exactly. So that's where summer comes into play. My freshman year, I did... Uh, summer class in Boston. It was a good time, you know, less people there, so you can kind of take advantage of campus more. Beautiful weather. Yeah. You know, Boston's great in the summer, as I said. So you can definitely take class. They limit you to two classes, I guess three if you're taking like a one credit seminar. But, but it's, it's possible. Yeah, they, like nine credits, I believe, is the, is the limit for that for summer. So, But yeah, it's really common. Lots of students do summer classes. And I, I just came back from a, a summer session out in Seattle. We have a uh, Northeastern has a lot of satellite campuses in various parts of the United States, and the one in London is really big, as I talked yeah. about before. So I was doing aerospace engineering classes out in Seattle, wow. and if you know for two months, yeah, exactly. I mean, it was great, and they set me up, and the classes were fun, and they provided lots of ne- lots of networking opportunities, yeah. and it was a really great time. Got to explore Washington State, do some hiking out in the mountains. It was a great time. Just get somewhere else besides Boston, and exactly. New Jersey, which is always fun. Exactly, and. Uh, yeah, and, and this is why I want to touch on this because it's really what puts Northeastern apart, not only compared to its other schools in Boston, but really almost everywhere in the country. That whole idea of, a whole idea and concept of really just having a job in your industry while you're in college, which I think, you know, for lack of better terms, is just really, really interesting. Because it, it, at Syracuse, it's almost like it, it, you can't even think of doing that because you're so busy with class and whatnot, and it's just not the typical college experience. So I think at Northeastern, you know, if you really want to get that real-world experience like, like you did, it's such an amazing opportunity. For sure. But turning more towards the social aspect life of college, at Northeastern, are there any, like, you know, traditions on campus that make it pretty unique? You know, is Greek life big? I mean, what is that, what is that like at Northeastern? Yeah, so it's a city. So we don't have the typical frat life that you can expect in the South or out at big state schools, yeah. but it's surprisingly big, especially among the female students. Being part of sororities is a lot more common than being part of fraternities. Interesting. And, is there any reason why that would be? Or? I, I really couldn't tell you. Yeah. I think it's just a, you know, they, yeah, I mean, a lot of people just prefer to be in groups of people that they can spend time with. Yeah. And I don't, it's just not as big with fraternities for some reason. But then again, I mean, I live with all frat guys. I'm, I'm not in a frat myself, but I... I guess you can consider me an honorary member. Uh, all my roommates are in the same frat at Northeastern. But it, it's surprisingly big. And we don't have frat houses. Boston banned them after an incident at MIT, one of the MIT frats. So they banned official frat houses. So how it kind of works there is you you have... Satellite houses, kind yeah, of. Yeah, so you, this is a neighborhood called Mission Hill in Boston, which is you know near Northeastern. And it's where all the frats kind of... They get groups of guys together or sororities, get groups of girls together. And they, you know, they, they bid for houses. Like, and they're, they're full-fledged houses, like three yeah. floors, three units. In so Boston, have, wow. Yeah, yeah. And it's pretty common. That's where I'm living starting next week. And I, I guess it's technically a frat house. It's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty dominated by frat, frat guys. Frat guys. Yeah. Uh, at least, you know, starting in September, I'm living in a different place. That's really going to be a frat house. This yeah. one is pretty mixed with girls and, and, and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's, it's very unique because you don't have official frat houses. So every year... The, the frats kind of reset what houses they have. Oh, right, because yeah, you're, uh, le- you're leasing Exactly, them, your, yeah. lease, your lease ends. And and the real estate situation in Boston is pretty tough. Yeah. So, I mean, we found our house for September in October. Of, of, of the yeah. previous year. We, I mean, we, we went as far as to hire a realtor, which we paid another month's rent to him. Just to, to find just the Just to find us properties that were available. Jeez. And they were rare even at that. So, yeah, it's... Yeah, and, that, and that's really common for juniors and seniors. Yeah, I'm tailoring back to that earlier. Yeah. Living off campus on Mission Hill is, is really popular, or just off campus in general in Fenway and other neighborhoods uh, around Northeastern. But yeah, you have to you have to get on it early if you're planning on living somewhere. Uh, you have to get on it a you know, year in advance. You got to start looking. So And it's, the housing is even like that, you know, where I go at Syracuse, where it's Syracuse, it's nowhere near as competitive as Boston. But the fact that right, Boston, New York City, you know, the bigger cities in this country, especially that are older and don't have as much housing, yeah. it's going to be, you know, even more competitive because it's college kids on top of actual adults and whoever else just trying to find a house. But, you know, say that someone's not into 
Greek life, is there still stuff to do in Boston and on Northeastern's campus on, you know, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, so you're not just sitting alone inside? Oh, for sure. I mean, there's there's plenty of events that Northeastern runs itself. You know, it's a typical college, bonding stuff. You know, it, it's, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah. It, a lot, I know people who go to those, they have a good time. Yeah, clubs run events for non-members to come out and, you know, you know for barbecues and, and stuff like that. And then you have the club scene, which is really big. The bar scene is really big in Boston, right. you know, big drinking town. Not in terms of, like, you know, people being dangerous and drinking a lot. But, you know, the, the, cu- the, the culture, culture there is that's that's really the main of way of seeing people is you go out to the bar and you see your buddies. Yeah. And uh, it's what I do with my friends. I'm not in the frat, so I don't really do a lot or as many frat stuff as my friends do. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, there's bars and clubs you can get into. There's under 21 clubs and bars you can go or not bars, but clubs you yeah, can yeah. go to, you know, take part in. And it's it's a fun time for sure. And there's a club right off Northeastern's campus that's very popular with students. It's actually a bar. And uh, I know a lot of people who go there. I haven't been there myself because I heard they're they're pretty strict, strict with on, however man. many people they let in. Yeah. But it's it's a really nice bar. So for me. So there's definitely stuff to do, you know, oh, yeah. besides the typical Greek life yeah, experience exactly. on the weekends. And you can also just, you know, make the most of Boston. That, that's just stuff associated with being out with people. But you yeah. can also just enjoy Boston on your own or with True. your friends in other ways. You know, right. walking around the plenty of parks they have, lots of shopping to do, lots of historic districts, museums, places to go, things to see. I mean, Boston has a lot of stuff to offer. So I, and this is kind of a, a, a follow-up question to what we just discussed. If Northeastern was, say, you're in Blacksburg, Virginia, or Oxford, Ohio, or Starkville, Mississippi, where it's kind of, you know, teetering on the middle of nowhere status, would it be a very different experience compared to what you've had so far oh, in the yeah. middle of one of the biggest cities in the country? Yeah, 100%. I mean, it just would not be the same. I'm sure they'd have the co-op program, probably not as established because, you know, you don't have cities to base yeah, it out yeah, of. Yeah, you, you don't have, I mean, Boston's full of engineering firms. I, that's just engineering, but, uh, you know, you wouldn't have as many connections because you're not in a city where you can be established like that. Right. But I'm sure they still have the program. It probably wouldn't be as big because, you know, you're not attracting as many students to the middle of nowhere as you are to a city as renowned as Boston. So it would it would be an entirely different university. And I, I, I don't even know if I'd be there if it was in a different... Yeah, just because a lot of people don't realize that the environment around where your college is kind of makes or breaks your experience sometimes more than what's in the actual college itself. Obviously, obviously if Northeastern was just, you know, a, a, a rinky-dink, below-average academic school, the experience wouldn't be as great for you. For but sure, yeah. at the same time, if it wasn't in the city of Boston, it wouldn't be as great as well. And that, you know, as we're kind of wrapping up this episode here... My favorite question that I always ask is, Dan, if you could just describe Northeastern, if it's possible, in one sentence. Man, that's tough. <laughs> Let me see. I'd say Northeastern's a school, and don't take this the wrong way, it, it's a school that tries to get you to spend as least the least amount of time there as possible. What do you mean by that? And and, and that's in the way that they, they send you out on and these programs and, and co-op and study abroad and dialogues and, and other stuff that I haven't mentioned, they try to get you to make the most of their network. And their network is in other places. And they want to send you out into the world, get you experience. You can come back to Northeastern, contribute to Northeastern with your experience, and help them further spread out into the world. And that's kind of North, what Northeastern is all about. Experiential learning, you know, spending time in other places, learning about other areas, and bringing it back to the culture of Northeastern. And that's right. A lot of schools say that they want to do that. I, but it's really kind of the opposite. Where a lot of schools want to keep their students on campus for all four years, and you know, I guess Northeastern at the end of the day is taking your money because that's what colleges are all all about. But I mean, yeah. that's a different discussion yeah, yeah, than what definitely we're... different discussion. <laughs> so. But at the same time, it's it's awesome to hear that Northeastern wants you to kind of go out into the real world, you know, whether that's in Oakland or Seattle or Dublin or London or wherever, and just bring it back to enhance the campus culture and just make, I I assume that makes it even just more unique. But, you know, Dan, as we wrap up, is there anything that I didn't get to ask you that you want to share? And is there any advice that you want to share for students going to Northeastern or anyone looking at college in general? Yeah, I mean... If you're looking to get experience while you're in university, I, I'd say there's no better place to do it than at Northeastern University. I mean, they they take pride and they, yeah, they take pride in their program and and they make sure that you make the most out of what they have to offer. So if you're looking to have a unique college experience, something that's you know a bit out of the box, then I think Northeastern's for you. 
but yeah, no, I, I'd say we covered just about everything, G. Yeah, I, I think we definitely did too. This was a blast having you on and talking all things Northeastern. And, and Dan, you know, I just want to wish you the best of luck at, I honestly don't know how many years you have left at Northeastern exactly. Usually I'd say too, but you know, I wish you the best of luck during the rest of your time at Northeastern or wherever it takes you around the world. Really appreciate it, dude. Thank you very much.